a year of some of my all-time favorites, but also some real stinkers. Truly, you must never listen to this. I know, Werner. I'm never going to. Today we are ranking over 30 death metal albums from 1995, and we're starting with Dark Tranquility with The Gallery. <laughs> absolute masterpiece of an album. To me, this is one of the best and most important early Mellow Death albums of all time. Punish My Heaven sets the tone right away. The title track brings those acoustic guitars and those mournful female vocals against woodblock, not to mention that main driving melody. The one brooding warning is just a cascade of drums and guitar before making that proggy transition. Midway through Infinity has those amazing gang vocals. Just a totally unique experience. Love this album. Love this band putting it at perfection. On the flip side, we have Autopsy with Shit Fun. First off, what a truly terrible album cover and name. Some of these track names have that shock for shock value sake kind of cringe too. Very sort of chaotic and random, especially in the vocals. Rough production, it's not terrible with some decent riffs here and there, but it's the lowest fan rated album on Metal Storm with a miserable 6.3 the last time I checked for a reason falling a full point before the next one above it. I see some occasional defenders of this album, but for me, it's easily at the bottom in there. He caught the shit <laughs> Then we have Suffocation with Pierced From Within. This album feels much tighter both in production and performance than the last one, carrying over the growth from the previous album, but now complemented with a heavier mix and more memorable riffs. Vocals continue to become more comprehensible in terms of what is being said. Some slower parts like the opening of Torn into Enthrallment flexing their abilities, Depths of Depravity, Brood of Hatred are total headbangers, some killer solos too. This one is going to fantastic. Then we have Belphegor with The Last Supper. <laughs> The debut album from this Austrian black and death metal band, which I have a very up and down relationship with. There are certain albums I really enjoy, like Conjuring the Dead and Lucifer and Cestus, but then there are plenty of what I'd consider to be outright trash in between. This album is pretty solid overall. It doesn't have the same cringy elements of some of the later material, but it also doesn't quite have its own identity either. Just pitch black, noisy, aggressive death metal with raw production and a hint of synths here and there for a little extra flavor. I'm going to put this one at good. Tier. Then we have Incantation with Upon the Throne of Apocalypse. This is a weird one in the discography because it's actually just the previous album with the track list reversed and re-recorded with a production style the band felt was more fitting. It's got a lower guitar tone and overall sounds very dark and ominous, and I dig it. I appreciate both versions, but this one does feel a little bit more evil on some level. One of their better records and a pretty strong one on this particular list, so one of the few times Incantation is going to make the top half at Amazing. Then we have Wicked Innocence with Omnipotence. <laughs> Holy shit, these vocals. Like, between the gurgles and muddy production, this is truly an album for the more depraved, brutal death metal fans out there. But then you get to track two, and there's also some spoken word that made me think of a possessed Eddie Vedder. I'll be honest, within the first few seconds, I thought I was going to dump this in meh, but honestly, the instrumentation is quite impressive once you get past the goofier elements, and the further you get in, the more it starts to expand in some unexpected and more progressive directions. So yeah, I'm putting this one at great tier. Then we have Accursed with Meh. Meditations Among the Tombs. The only full-length album from this Wisconsin-based band, though 20 years after this they put out a compilation called The Book of Accursed. Pretty raw stuff with similar hallmarks as early black metal from the production and synth elements to the screechy vocals. Unfortunately, I think it ends up sounding very kind of confused between these two worlds, and the keys on tracks like Oceans of Time can come off as a little silly to me. The spoken word parts are also pretty corny. Not the worst thing here, I'm gonna put it at okay. Then we have Opeth with Orchid. <laughs> Yeah! 
The debut is far from my favorite album from these Swedish progressive death metal legends, but it at least makes my top five already. Another album on this list with an atmosphere that is completely its own. I still remember the first time I heard it and being utterly captivated by its folky overtones right from the first guitars on In Mist She Was Standing. You want to talk about longer songs that are well written and hold my attention, this is what I'm talking about. They would only improve from here, but on this list I feel more than happy giving it fantastic. Then we have Unanimated with Ancient God of evil. Album 2 from this Swedish Melodeath band following up the already impressive In the Forest of the Dreaming Dead. Definitely still hearing elements of Dismember, but much more so here at the gates as well as some seeming rock influences here and there. The synth and black metal elements I heard in the debut feel more toned down, but are still present at times, and I would say the vocal performance has improved a bit. Unfortunately, I also feel like the songwriting feels a little bit more loose, and as a result comes off as unfocused and makes the experience feel a little bit more tedious. So, still enjoyable, but not the best. I'm going to put it at good tier. Speaking of Dismember, we have Dismember with massive killing capacity. <laughs> The continued descent in quality of this Swedish Big Four band that initially blew me away with their debut only for most of the material after that to fall flat. Based on reviews, people seem to enjoy this album, but I just feel like it's another big step down from the things I loved about the earlier material. Raging early mellow death riffs and atmosphere have been traded mostly for bouncy, repetitious grooves and uninspired vocals on tracks like I Saw Them Die and Massive Killing Capacity. There are still some hooks harkening back to my taste like On Frozen Fields, but even with these, the vocals just kind of ruin it for me, and with so many better alternatives for that style by this point, I just don't find it worth fighting my way through that. So ultimately, this is just at okay, but as always, I'm interested down in the comments for you to share why you disagree. If you love this album, by all means, tell me, and that goes for any other record on this list. Also, if you're enjoying the video, hit the like button, it really helps me out. But continuing on, we have Septic Flesh with Aesop Tron. <laughs> Once more, this Greek nowadays symphonic death metal band is one of my favorites and I sang praise for their incredible debut last video. This album is also excellent in its own right, but not as strong, I would say. It's a little bit more doomy and with a little less atmosphere from the keys, I also don't find the guitars to be quite as memorable. That aside, I'd still say even the lesser Septic Flesh albums still rise above plenty of other death metal albums in any given year, especially in this early, early era. Like, I, I think they were kind of ahead of their time in many ways. I'm going to put them at great tier. Then we have Sentenced with Amok. How embarrassing. Another unfortunate victim of Death and Roll, which is all the more of a shame considering how good the last album was. Like, that blew me away. Definitely watch the 1994 list if you haven't. I was still pretty into it with the opener, but Phoenix goes full butt rock with Jarl's Four Days. Like, just fucking atrocious. And then Funeral Spring is also particularly awful. There's some decent guitar work here and there, but it really is an absolute stinker, dropping all the way from the top of the list to the bottom at meh. Then we have Benediction with The Dreams You Dread. <laughs> I saw some fairly negative reviews for this, but it's honestly pretty solid. Fun, chuggy, groovy riffs, killer drumming, and strong production. The only thing I don't love are the vocals. Dave's particular cadence makes me laugh at times, but even that feels more charming than annoying like on some of the other records here. It's also not far off of Napalm Death's mid-90s material. Kind of hypnotic in a way, so... Hopefully this makes up a little bit for me skipping their first two albums, which I apologize for. It's hard to keep track of everything on these massive lists. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually putting this one at amazing. Then we have At The Gates with Slaughter of the Soul. Once more, I have to ruin it for those who haven't noticed yet and call this the best album to get away with using Papyrus Front. <laughs> no, you can't unsee it. Joking aside, this is of course one of the most lauded melodic death metal albums of all time, responsible for both setting a new bar for how the genre would sound moving forwards and also set trends for other genres as well. I feel like most of what I could say about this album pretty much goes without saying at this point, and you can already hear more of my thoughts in my At The Gates discography tier list. My personal favorite tracks here are Cold, Suicide Nation, the title track, and of course, Blinded by Fear. You know where this is going. It's, it's perfection. And we have Malevolent Creation with Eternal. Sure. No 
album four for this U.S. band featuring guitarist John Rubin, also of Monstrosity, and drummer Dave Kouros, also of Disgorged, Pyrexia, and Suffocation, among other things. I really like their first two albums, one even making the top of one of these lists, but after that, they kind of fall off again for me like some of the other bands here. The last album was just decent, and this one isn't any better. A lot of repetitive riffs and grating belted snarls. It's not bad, but for all of its raging blast beats, I just find it dreadfully boring. Dave is definitely a highlight here, though. Like, definitely check it out at least for the drumming. I'm gonna put this one at okay tier. Then we have Vader with De Profundus. <laughs> The second album from this Polish band that I absolutely also adore, and arguably the album that really put them on the map. I see this as a lot of longtime fans' favorite, and even though I think they have better ones, I do think especially stands out within the context of this list. Peter has such a great voice that is instantly recognizable and largely one of a kind, and I love his particular fusion of death and thrash riffs that have defined their entire discography. Personal favorites here, Blood of Kingu, Sothis, and of course opener Silent Empire, which has a killer breakdown to to set the tone for everything else to come. So, Swan went to fantastic. We have molested with Blood Drown. <laughs> Another one-and-done full-length from this Norwegian band featuring Erland Eriksson, who has also played drums for Gorgoroth, and vocals and guitars from freaking Oysten Garnis Brun, who founded Borknagar and put out their debut just a year later. Always fun to look at the lineups while listening through these albums to discover things like that. It's great to learn, because knowledge is power! As for this album, it does have some similar Blizzard-like vibes in the blackened tremolo-heavy guitar work, but here joined with deep, gurgly vocals. There's also a folky part with strings and clanking hammers, as well as some jaw harp around the middle of this album, which was a welcome surprise, even if it doesn't exactly gel as well with this as it does with black metal. Solid enough and a little different in sound, but I got a little bored after a while, so I'm gonna put it at good tier, probably on the higher end. Though. Then we have Sinister with Hate. <laughs> Album 3 from this Netherlands band with many others under their belt. I've been consistently enjoying their albums, but they've not really broken into the upper tiers with their fairly meat and potatoes approach. Another solid listen with a good mix of grooves and blast beats, but fairly forgettable. Embodiment of Chaos, The Cursed, Mayhem, and Awaiting the Opsu are pretty rad, though. I'm gonna put this one at great, too. Then we have Abramelon with Abramelon. <laughs> The debut album from this Australian band, originally formed as Acheron in 1988. I'm gonna be real and say I had never heard of this band before preparing for this video, but I was banging my head pretty hard when I pressed play. Chunky ass riffs and killer rhythms from drums that very much sound like they were recorded from a single mic. I'd most closely compare their sound to early Cannibal Corpse, and frankly, they could go toe to toe with some of those songs. So I'm gonna put this one at amazing. Then we have Internal Bleeding with Voracious Contempt. <laughs> The first album from this New York slam and brutal death metal crew, mad respect for any band that helps to push a new style with slam largely still in its infancy here, but I have just never cared much for that particular genre, and this album doesn't do much to change my mind. The production, vocals, and repetition leave a lot to be desired, so this may be sacrilege. To, I'll bet there are some slam fans in the audience that are, are going to be very upset about this, but it went to meh for me. But I will say it's, it's at like the upper end of meh. <laughs> then we have Death with Symbolic. The Legends back for another one, and one that I've said some things that have upset some people about in a couple of different videos. The guitar work and atmosphere is undeniable. I just find the songwriting a little meandering at times, which was always controversial to say, but I stand by it. Human and symbolic are excellent, but individual thought patterns still beats both for me. I'd also say that the second half is better than the first, and Without Judgment, Crystal Mountain, and Misanthrope are my personal favorites. All that said, I put a lot of thought into it, and I do think at least within the context of 1995, it does make the top. It's just not the top top, but it's like at the bottom of the top of perfection for me. Then we have Caducity with the Willian Wielder Quest.
The debut album from this Belgian band tagged as epic death metal on Metal Archives. I describe it in many ways as similar to Bolt Thrower, but with a little bit more varied and chaotic sound. There are parts where it sounds very much like them, and others where it deviates in a number of different ways, either as with the atmospheric synth on the whimsical crafts of enchantment, or the bizarre spoken word with a dragon's blaze on their banners. Death metal by Mike Patton energy. The drums also have a very live recorded sound with heavy emphasis on the snare hits. I was actually having a hard time deciding where to put this as it is pretty interesting but not enjoyable all the time. Pretty obscure too, there are no reviews on Metal Archives and they don't even have a page on Metal Storm. So an interesting one to check out. If I recall, this is not on uh, Spotify either. You'll have to listen to it on YouTube, but it's going to great tier. Then we have Gorlust with Reign of Lunacy. <laughs> The first of only two full-length albums 20 years apart from each other from this Canadian brutal death metal band, getting a mix of Cannibal Corpse and Suffocation vibes coming fast and vicious for a pretty lean 30 minutes. Good example of how to take the fundamentals of the genre but really hone them to their maximum potential. It's not my favorite thing here, but I found myself really impressed with just how well they take the usual tools and just work them so well. So it, it moved all the way up at fantastic. Then we have Alchemist with Lunasphere. The second album from this Australian avant-garde and progressive death metal band, I could draw some light comparisons to Atheist, but I don't think the performances are as impressive or the songwriting quite as tight. The album feels a bit more freeform, seeming to wander in whatever direction they feel like. Sometimes the results are interesting, others I just feel like I'm looking at my watch waiting for the next cool thing to happen. Still more interesting than some other things here, and I dig the Middle Eastern sounding influences on the melodies, would still recommend it's going to good here maybe like around here another big one here with deicide once upon the cross I actually appreciate the increased infectiousness of the groove, opening title track, and Christ Denied feel like a return to more anthemic vocal lines. Solid fun album, if a little unremarkable, I don't think it's quite as strong as the previous two in terms of the songwriting or performances, in a way it just feels a little bit watered down in my opinion, though I see some people riding for this album for sure. It's also a little on the slower side, but there's a fun fact behind that. In terms of drummer Steve Asheim said that's due to the album only coming out to 22 minutes when he played the tracks at full speed, so they re-recorded them at a slower pace to get to 30 minutes. <laughs> they play the songs full speed live, which I think I would have enjoyed more, even if it did mean losing that eight minutes. Like, what's eight minutes? I the shorter the album, the tighter, the better, I say. Definitely in the upper half for me, but it doesn't hit the top tier. So it's going to amazing, probably like here. Then we have Mortification with Primitive Rhythm Machine. It's the truth. Album 5 from this Australian band we've been covering, and I was initially excited by the tribal sounding drums kicking this thing off like it's Sepultura. Unfortunately, I can see why they named the album for those elements, because that's really the only thing this album has going for it. And everything else about this is very bad. The vocals are weak, the guitar work is not particularly memorable, and the songs are just bland and repetitive. It could be worse, but I wouldn't exactly recommend it either, so it's going to okay. Then we have Cataclysm with Sorcery. <laughs> And another debut, this time from this relatively popular Canadian band. Unfortunately, as much as I enjoy their later melodic death metal albums, this is another messy retread of more brutal territory. Everything just feels very half-baked from the guitars to the vocals, and the mix, at least on the version I was listening to, was downright irritating my ears and my brain. This feels like the album someone makes when their rabies progresses to a point of no return. I'm putting it at meh. Here. I'm hoping to sing their praises in future videos, though. Then we have Dissection with Storm of the Light's Bane. Now, I will always consider Dissection to be more of a black metal band, and they were definitely more a part of that scene, but the crossover of those Swedish riffs with the likes of At The Gates and Dark Tranquility is unmistakable, and for sure if I had left them out, it would have been all over the comments. Regardless of where you place them, this is another masterwork in my opinion, just the perfect mix of infectious hooks and blizzard-like atmosphere. Every time I listen, I feel like I'm walking out into the frozen darkness. This is going to perfection. Then we have Nembryonic with Psycho 100. 
one of just two full-length albums from this Netherlands crew, both in the 90s. These guys are just as much of a grindcore as a death metal band, so expect plenty of speed and some pretty gnarly vocals, but there's also some surprising experimentation, too, with progressive elements, doom, and some other things culminating in the 20-plus minute title track that you probably need to just listen to for yourself. It's not all great, and it doesn't all quite come together. It might take some more listens for it to really settle in, but another interesting one for sure. For now, it's just going to good tier. And hey, you know, I acknowledge my ratings change all the time. This is not set in stone, but this is where I'm at right now. I just realized, despite being relatively familiar with this band, I don't actually know if it's pronounced Chrysian or Chrysian or maybe something else, but it's their album Black Force Domain. <laughs> This is the debut from this Brazilian band, and true to the tone set by peers like Sarcophago and Sepultura in the early days, this is some dark, grimy stuff. This album floors the gas and never really lets off again until it's over with chaotic guitars, blasting drums, and throaty, ferocious snarls. The production is also very strange with this kind of toilet bowl reverb to the vocals that ends up kind of working in its favor. Insert lame zoomer skibbity toilet meme, I guess. Definitely a berating and battering listen, sometimes to a fault, but I found myself pretty caught up in its seemingly endless supply of aggression, so I ended up putting it at great tier. Then we have Deceased with the Blueprints for Madness. <laughs> Album 2 from this Virginia band, and it feels like they're almost cheating with these rollicking D-beats getting me banging my head, and then at the gates goes punk energy, also carries through into the guitars, bass, chaotic vocals, and overall production. I might also compare it to Autopsy, but without some of the doom elements, which is a win for me. It's very noisy and pretty DIY sounding, but this is a good example of how to pull that off and make it a part of the charm, so I'm putting it at amazing. We also have Agony with Apocalyptic Dawning. <laughs> Another band on this list with only one full length, this one from Quebec. You may also recognize that artwork as it was reused by Blood Incantation. It's from a sci-fi novel. It's a fine listen and there is some particularly fast guitar work, standout drumming from the late Eric Boudot, and later on more dynamic and progressive elements, but the overall songwriting is lacking and the vocal performance is about as one note as you can get. So this one also went to meh, but it like almost teetered into okay. Then we have Xenomorph with Imperial Regimes. <laughs> Hard to say no to a band named after one of my all-time favorite creature designs, H.R. Giger. Rest in peace. Unfortunately, this is the one and only full length from this Nebraska band, but those tend to make for an interesting listen on these lists. On some level, I'd compare this to Dissection, both in the kind of blackened vocals and guitar work, very dark and evil, but with some hooky melody as well. I'd say it's more overtly death metal and a little bit more raw. It's also not maybe as proficient or atmospheric as Storm of the Light's Bane, but I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't, and it landed all the way at fantastic probably like right here oh then we have six feet under with haunted <laughs> The time has come. It's the infamous post-Cannibal Corpse project from Chris Barnes. I hear a lot of people who hate this band as much as I do actually defend this album, and it's not without its catchier moments like Silent Violence, fun groove to that one, but it's still pretty low by 1995 standards, I would say. Not the worst and not unlistenable, like some of their later albums. Oh yeah, we don't talk about that. And not the worst on this list, but I do find myself getting pretty bored with a lot of it, so... Surprise, surprise, you might have expected me to put this at meh, but I put it at okay. I'm trying to be fair. And then we have Morbid Angel with Domination. <laughs> The best Morbid Angel album, yes, I said it again, this is also the first album with Hate Eternal and now Cannibal Corpse guitarist Eric Rutan. Where the Slime Live may be my favorite Morbid Angel song of all time, it's just so weird and unique, the vocal performance is so bizarre and memorable, and it breaks out of the usual death metal mold, and I appreciate that. Continuing to step up the atmosphere, and yeah, more groove focused, but it leads to a more diverse array in terms of composition, each song has its own personality. Other great tracks here, Dominate, Eyes to See, ears to hear with another infectious vocal part on that one and then dawn of the angry with that instantly recognizable tremolo line and all of the crazy shifts in pacing 
you all know that this had to go to perfection and it kind of fights with slaughter of the soul for my ultimate favorite you all check out this playlist for more in this series 1990 91 92 and 93 and we will be continuing on to 96 very soon you can also check out this playlist for more death metal discography rankings and again let me know down in the comments what are your favorites your least favorites and why but that'll do it for now flight of icarus signing off i will see you in the trenches